X Dynamic 110. It's kind of a mouthful. I'm not really sure what particular order those terms go in, but we'll go with that. This is the P400 X Dynamic, and I'll talk a little bit about the different trim levels and options that you can get on these vehicles. Um, some returning members of the channel might remember that I actually had a, um, a 2020 Land Rover Defender 110. That was a um, that was in silver over Acorn. That was back in 2020 when the vehicle had just come out. And this is my third Defender now. Previous to this vehicle, I had the Land Rover Defender Trophy Edition. That was basically the same trim level and everything that's going on with this Defender. As I said, this is an X Dynamic SE. And there is some sort of model and trim confusion, which is understandable for people that are new to the brand. And some, some of you viewers might be more familiar with the Land Rover Defender than others. But basically, from the get-go, you have the 90, the 110, and now the 130. Now the 130 is sort of the extended wheelbase, extended rear, so think of it as sort of the Grand Cherokee L, if you're familiar with that, or Expedition Max, for example, here in the US. Just have that extended back on it for the 130. But basically, just sticking to 90 and 110, which is what I'm most familiar with, you have basically the Defender, which is the base, then there's the, the Defender X Dynamic, which is sort of the middle trim. It comes equipped standard with some um, some more premium options, such as the leather, you know, touch points a little bit better, and so on on the dash. Uh, and then from there, there's the Defender X, not to be confused with the X Dynamic, but the Defender X that sort of has the well-appointed luxury interior that you would expect in, say, a Range Rover Vogue. You get the Windsor leather seats. Etc. is standard. I think he didn't cool front and rear and so on. So you don't have to really select your options a la carte up in the Defender X. And then there's the Defender V8, of course, which comes also in 90 and 110 uh, flavors. And that has the well-trusted and well-proven 5-liter supercharged V8 that's in a lot of JLR products from the SVR that I had, uh, SVR Jaguar, the SVR Range Rover Sport that trickled down into the Defender finally and that supposedly will be the last hurrah for that engine will be in the in the Defender. Moving on from some of those model and trim designations, let's talk a little bit about what this Defender is like to drive. As I said, this is the P400 variant and if you've seen the video on the silver Defender that I had, the 2020, I talked about how robust this motor really is and how much of a great pairing it is with this chassis. So the, what the P400 means, as I said, the P400 is the straight six motor and it's coupled to a 48 volt alternator, which sort of acts as a mild hybrid. The straight six is turbocharged and then the 48 volt alternator slash supercharger sort of kicks in and eliminates some of that turbo lag that you come to expect from a turbo motor that's standalone. And it really does have a lot of good get up and go. The P400 110 factory rated is somewhere around 5.7 to 5.8 seconds to 60 miles per hour. In the 90 it's a little bit less obviously because you lose a lot of that weight with the two doors taken off. Um, but it feels really good. It's very torquey. 400 horsepower has over 400 pound feet torque, 400 pound foot of torque as well. So it really does get a move on. It's paired to the eight-speed ZF gearbox. Constant praise to that. I go on and on about that in all my videos with the GLR products. This eight-speed couple with this motor is absolutely fantastic. So stepping into the fender and getting out onto the road really is one of my first drives here. One of the first things that you really notice right off the bat, which is surprising for something that looks off-road oriented and sort of rugged, say like a Ford Bronco or a Jeep Wrangler, is really the ride quality in the chassis dynamics of this Land Rover Defender. This particular Defender is specced with air suspension, which I think is an absolute must for anybody that's going to be planning on daily driving this, whether they're taking it to work, doing the errands and so on, and maybe, and then, you know, on the week I want to play with it and go on the dunes or do some rock crawling and things like that, because this is really a sort of a Swiss Army knife of a of an SUV. It can do all those things very well, but it can take you to work 
to the country club in comfort if that's what you so choose. Favorite feature of the vehicle, and you notice as soon as you get in driving down the road, is that air suspension. Um, it has monitors all over the vehicle that are constantly monitoring the road surfaces and looking ahead saying, you know, is there a duck here, is there a big bump coming up? It's feeling the surface of that road and it's very intuitive and it fine tunes the dampers very nicely to give you a very comfortable streamlined ride. Some other impressions of the Defender. So, I mean, right when you get in, you do realize it's, it is a big vehicle, right? It's, it's a little bit wider. Actually, I would say much wider than that of a Jeep Wrangler. Some of you might know that I have a 392 Wrangler with an AEV package on it. And that car is, despite the way it looks with 37 inch tires and so on, Jeep Wrangler has always been a very narrow car, all things considered when you're in the SUV segment. Bronco is quite a bit wider because it's built on the Ford Ranger frame. This Defender is not a small vehicle. Curb weight on the 110. P400 is somewhere around 5,500 pounds. So this is definitely a chunker. This is not um, a lightweight SUV by any stretch. But the thing that's most surprising about it is really the way that it hides its weight. And people go on and on about that and say about say that a lot of, about a lot of different vehicles. But it really is true that you do notice all of the ingenuity that these engineers have put into tuning the chassis, tuning the engine, the, the transmission, and so on, to really give you something that's actually pretty exciting to drive. It just feels really good. It's kind of hard to um, portray that to you as I'm driving along perhaps with the lack of body roll and so on. I guess you just have to take my word for it, but it feels really good. These seats hug you nicely. Uh, talk about some of the characteristics and unique features that I like about the Land Rover Defender and why this is now my third now and why I just continually like to come back to these things. This is This really does sit, I think it's positioned uniquely in the industry. I do not think that this is the Jeep Wrangler or the Ford Bronco competitor. The closest rival in my mind is the Mercedes G-Wagon, whether it be the G63, which is, I suppose, goes head to head with the Defender V8, then the G550, which would be slotted against something like my particular Defender, the P400, X-Dynamic, or the Defender X, some of those more luxury and trim features. But there's really nothing in this price point. Now, the Defender has a huge price point spread, admittedly, whether it be the 90, the 110, and so on. But the base Defender starts somewhere around, I think it's in the mid 50s. These can get, you can option any of the particular trim levels up quite a bit, depending on what you option, whether it be the bigger infotainment screen or you opt for leather, you have for heating cooled seats. Um, there's extended leather trim and all kinds of things the sunroof, moonroof, bigger wheels. Uh, for example, the 22 inch wheels would be a $4,000 option. You can option that on any one of the Defender trims. So you can really get them up there. Kind of confusing on how to spec your Defender to suit your needs without getting too insane. But I would say, from my experience and I guess knowledge, driving these Defenders and owning them for, I guess what's going on three or four years collectively now, I would say that the, uh, the X Dynamic is a very, very good proposition giving you the blend of utility and luxury. This particular X-Dynamic that I'm in does have the, is what's called Robostec um, trim inserts. And it's sort of like a, it's not quite an Alcantara, but it's almost like a soft nylon trim around the outside of the seats. But this is finished in, in leather up in the middle of the seat. And these are really, the seats are really, really comfortable. They're heated and cooled. I have heated seats in the back and there could have been option with cool seats as well, but the particular gentleman that spec this vehicle did not do so. I'll get into a little bit how this vehicle came about in a second. Um, but you have things on the on the door panel, for example, like exposed bolts, which is really cool, which kind of harkens back to the to the older Defender, which is really, of course, limited to 
sort of a farm vehicle or a business van over in the UK where these, of course, are were built. We, we were not lucky enough to really experience the Defender until lately, aside from the, uh, the Defender NAS, which was here in the early 90s to mid-90s. However, you know, not very many of those are made, brought over here because of airbag regulations and so on. So the Defender is relatively new to the United States, aside from those that were able to import them and get their hands on the NAS, which is a very rare uh, Defender. But driving down the road in this thing, as I said, this is not just a souped up Discovery or Discovery S that they threw into sort of a boxy area. This, the Defender chassis is unique to this vehicle. Hours upon hours of torture tests up in the Arctic Circle to the Saharan Desert, all over the place, even tried and tested all around the globe to make sure that this thing could hang with the best of the off-roaders. The Lamborghini Urus went by me, give it a thumbs up. That feels good to be respected by a Lamborghini Urus owner. Now that's sort of a controversial vehicle as well, I like them personally, but... The Defender is the perfect harmony between capability and on your own comfort and enjoyment. I definitely recommend getting the, the P400 if you're here in the United States and not out for the four cylinder. I've heard good, you know, decent things about the P300, but I think it's just a little bit underwhelming for, for at least people like me that like a little bit of performance with my drive, even with my daily drivers. I think the P400 is well worth it. Um, because even if you opt for the P300, get that four cylinder, and you want still some of the creature comforts and options, you're price point difference is not very much, it's pretty negligible, it's only a few thousand dollars. So I think to get an extra hundred horsepower, and it's well worth the top for the P400. About 20, here we go. Yeah, and that's 85. So it is, it is not a slouch by any stretch. I mean, you will really surprise the people, <laughs> I can tell you. Um, I had a guy in an RS3 that was kind of baiting me yesterday. And of course, you know, the RS3 is going to be a little bit fucking that's quite a bit quicker. But he was pretty surprised, I think, with the performance of this Defender. Uh, obviously, there's a little bit of trickery in just the eyes, considering that it looks like a refrigerator, but it really does get a move on. And as I said, the, the performance is very, very impressive for the shape and the capability that you know that you're getting off-road with this as well. I think it has class leading, correct me if I'm wrong, affording capability. It's over three feet of standing water that this thing can go through. Uh, you have adjustable ride height modes with that air suspension so you can put in an off-road mode to give you better ground clearance or you can slam it all the way to the ground for access mode if you're loading groceries or you're loading granny into the back seat, for example. Just a lot of very intuitive thought process that you can tell that the engineers went through when they were developing this brand new Defender. Some of the other things I like about the Defender all the drive mode is this has what's called train response to. So you have your, your comfort mode, there's an eco mode which sort of draws back the throttle and you know keeps auto start stop on so you get better gas mileage. Just rock crawl mode, there's a dynamic mode which sort of um, tunes the throttle and the transmission and the engine accordingly to get you to get you going sort of like a sport or sport plus mode um, there's also a sand mode I think rock I want to say rock grass and ruts mode and there's also a snow mode which in all of those things adjust the suspension throttle response traction control accordingly depending on the particular environment that you're in the way that this particular defender came about I went into my retailer the other day, I was lucky enough to secure one of the last allocations of the Defender V8. That was supposed to be my next Defender rather than this one, and um, I went in there. I'll talk about that in a separate video, obviously, but I ordered a 110D Carpathian Edition Defender, which I'm really, really excited about. I actually test drove one the other day they had for sale. It was pre-owned. Absolutely loved it. I'll talk about that in a separate video. But I went in there the other day to order that Defender, and my salesman 
said that I actually I have a Pangea Green Defender 110 X Dynamic out there if you want to take a look at it. Said for test drive, and I said I had to have it. You know, given the we'd be foolish to not talk about some of the values and things like that in this crazy car market, but I figured even X Dynamic P400s like this, you don't even necessarily have to have the V8. These are trading for. Ten to fifteen thousand dollars over sticker. I decided to lease, and I said I'll keep it a few months, maybe five, six, seven months until my Defender V8 arrives. So that's what I did. I have a new Range Rover Sport, the brand new model that was just released a few months back. I have that. Should be one of the first ones in Michigan. That was supposed to be here around December twenty sixth, I think it was, day after Christmas. That just got unslotted. I found out at the dealership when I was taking delivery of this the other day. So. That's going to be a while too, so I don't have a confirmed date on that now. So I bought this, I released this Defender to sort of tie me over in the meantime because I love them so much. I really have had a lot of seat time in them and I've gotten to, to know them well. And I can confidently say that it is one of the, the if not best SUVs that I've ever driven. And I truly, I truly mean that at a unique price point. You have something similar, you have to get, like I said, the G550 or the G63. Going to be spending another sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars, depending on whether you're going G550 or G63. And also, good luck getting one. Um, to be fully transparent, this is a very difficult vehicle to get right now too. I was super lucky to be offered this. I, you know, a lot of salesmen use it as a tactic. You got to buy this right now. I got five or six other people on the line with other salesmen that want to buy it. You know, to try to get you to go ahead and make that decision right then and there but I can see when I was sitting there that I had there were at least two or three other salesmen that were on the phone I could actually hear when I was signing the paperwork there were people were calling about this thing so this was super lucky I own the only reason I have this thing right now is because it was a canceled order and then I just lucked out with timing with going into order the Defender V8 and I was offered this thing wait times are pretty variable depending on the location you are in the country and your retailer Right now, I think where we are, I, I don't quote me, contact Jaguar Land Rover Nova if you, if you want specific, but I think these are about at least a year out, I want to say. They have to be slotted or allocated the vehicle too, then you have your build slot if you want to order one yourself, a brand new one. So otherwise you have to settle for a certified pre-owned or pre-owned pre -owned unit. And there's nothing wrong with those. But uh, Land Rover has a nice pre-owned certified pre-owned program. You have an extra year that's tagged on to the factory warranty and it's unlimited miles, so it's a pretty good offering. So I want to talk a little bit just about the reliability and durability of this Land Rover Defender because I know that's sort of an elephant in the room. For a lot of people that don't have experience with GLR products or the Defender, people are going to think this is a notoriously unreliable vehicle. And I have the negativity in the words come from people throwing GLR under the bus were reflective in the, the Ford ownership years. A lot of the electronics and issues with these vehicles were unfortunately happened under Ford ownership. When Tata Motors took over GLR, it was one of the best things that happened to the company. I can tell you that. And I know that there, there are anecdotal stories that you hear from people, whether it's your great auntie or your third or fourth cousin to say, well, my Range Rover broke down and it was in the shop for six months and blah, blah, blah. I can tell you, as my sixth going on seventh and eighth GLR products, I have had not a single issue with those vehicles. And I have put a lot of miles on them. I told you the first Defender that I owned, I put about 14,000 miles on in a year. No issues, no electronic craziness going on and so on and so forth. And the same thing was true about my my two sports and my SVR and the other two Defenders. None of them had any issues. Um, drove them every day, enjoyed them. And I personally have not experienced any of those hiccups that people talk about. I guess you could say more than hiccups, but um, I know there have been some electronic issues with some of these new ones that where a simple software update has solved it, solved the problem for people. But I have not experienced any of those per personally. This, with the infotainment, this PIVI Pro system, it works flawlessly. 
It's the best integrated system, in my opinion, in terms of working with CarPlay and so on. As soon as you fire it up, the phone reconnects and it's playing the, the song right where you last left off. It's just, it's a very intuitive system, works really well, works much better than the Uconnect in my Jeep and, and I even, I think, the Sync and Ford. Just so thank you for tuning in and watching this video on my 2023 Defender. You're watching the PKF and I'm your host, Preston. Thanks a lot. <laughs>